hello guys welcome back this is Luis here once again so in the previous videos we looked at the configurations that we are supposed to do before we can have the VPN working like setting up a second adapter giving it a public IP address and also assign a public IP address to our client system so it can reach our VPN server so now that we have done all this the next thing that we need to do is we need to install the role that will make this server a VPN server so to do this we go to manage in the server manager then we click add roles and features now we've gone through this role installation so many times so i'm just going to click next and then next again onto the roles are listed and the role that we want to install is the remote access role remote access role now when you look at the description here it says remote access provides seamless connectivity through direct access vpn and web application proxy now let me tell you about direct access direct access is supposed to be microsoft's replacement for vpn it provides an always on and always managed experience so unlike vpn where you always have to establish a connection with direct access once it is configured Whenever the user has internet connection, he is connected to the organization's network. Isn't that beautiful? But today we just want to talk about VPN. And so we are going to go ahead and configure VPN in another video. I'll walk you through how to configure and set up direct access. So we are going to click next from here. And then click next again because we don't need any other feature. Click next. Now, this is all that we want to enable. We have direct access and VPN, we have um, routing, and then we have web application proxy. We want to enable direct access. So you select direct access, then you click add features because it requires certain features to work. So we click next, and then gives us a confirmation page. We click install. So this is going to install everything now i've done this before so certain things were skipped in the event where this is the first time it may ask you to add certain features that are required with um iis you just go ahead and then add the features click next and then do the installation so i'm going to pause the recording when the installation is done we'll pick up from here Okay, so the installation is done as we can see. Now, when the installation is done, just like every other role that we have installed, there's always this um, open the get wizard, um, get started wizard. We are going to close out of here. Now, when you go through with the wizard, what's going to do is it's going to walk you through the configuration using um, direct access. But then we don't want to do direct access now, we just want to do VPN. So we are going to go to tools. And there is going to be this role that is installed, routing and remote access. Routing and remote access. Routing and remote access. Routing and remote access. So we click on routing and remote access. And there we are. There we are. So it says routing and remote access provides secure remote access to private networks. Yes, we want a secure remote access to networks. So I'm going to right click here and then I'll go to configure and enable routing and remote access. That is what we do. So we click next. Now there are options here. We can decide to do either a dial up or VPN or we can make this server be a NAT server to translate internal IP addresses or we can make a private VPN and then NAT, or we can set up a site-to-site -site VPN to connect to private networks such as a branch of an office, or we can do a custom configuration. So we want to do a custom configuration. So we click next. Then what we want to do is we want to enable VPN access. So we click this, and then we click next, and then click finish. So the installation is good, the configuration is going to complete, and then we'll be asked to start the service. So we click start and then the service is going to be started. So when this is done, we are going to go through the properties of the server and make some little configuration. So once it's the service is started, we click finish. All right, so you notice the red arrow now changes to green. 
that tells you the services started. We have some options now down here. We have the uh, network interfaces that tells you the interface of your server, the IP addresses that your server is using. Then we have the uh, ports. So there are so many VPN ports available for the various protocols, SSTP, L2TP, and all that. Then right click on the server, DC, whatever your server name is, right click on it and let's go to properties. Now, when we come here, IP version 4 router and all that in the general tab, go to security. Now, for security, it's going to use Windows authentication, meaning your Active Directory is going to authenticate the users. We have Windows accounting also. If not, if you have a radio server, you can't use radios. Radio stands for Remote Authentication Dial in User Service. It's a service that is installed of Windows service that provides centralized management of user logon authentication authorization and accounting if you want to use l2tp instead of every any other um vpn protocol then you have to configure what we call a pre-shared key a pre-shared key that's a key that will be shared between the server and the client if you want to use sstp then you need to have a certificate at the moment we don't have any certificate so when time goes on and everything is in place we will come back and we'll configure here but one thing that i want us to pay attention to is the ipv4 now it says that when the users are successfully connected to the organization's network through vpn they should obtain ip address from a dhcp but we do not have a dhcp so for this to successfully work we need to make sure that the clients can have an IP address, which is a private IP address that they can use to communicate with the systems on the network. So we are going to select a static address pool. But if you have a DHCP on your server, then this shouldn't be a problem. Then we click add. Then I'm going to specify 192.168.1.10 to 192.168.1.50. So it means that when someone successfully connects to this server through VPN, within this range, an address will be specified for the client so he can communicate or participate on the network. So I click OK and then I click Apply and then OK. Now, under normal circumstances, everything is done on the server side but then i want to show you something let's go to active directory users and computers tools active directory users and computers and then right click right click on any user account at all right click on any user account and let's look at something when i come to the properties here you notice that we have a tab called dial in when I select dial in, the first option here says network access permission. It says that control access through NPS network policy. NPS stands for network policy server. And it is a service that allows you to specify policies that applies to users that are trying to connect to the network. Now, by default, there is a policy on the NPS that does not permit users to connect to the server through VPN connection. And every user on the network has this. I can easily select allow access here and that will be done. This user will be able to connect to the server through VPN. What if it's 100 users that are supposed to connect to the server through VPN? Do I have to go user by user? No, I rather need to create a policy on the NPS server. So I'm going to end this session here. In the next session, we'll look at how to configure NPS to allow VPN connection. Thank you for watching. Share the video, like it, comment, and then subscribe to the channel. Thank you.